Yo what's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. Today we're diving deep into something that's becoming increasingly important in the tech world, mobile security. Specifically, we're talking about mobile hacking. Now I know what you might be thinking. Mobile hacking? That's something that only happens in movies, right? Wrong. The reality is, as our phones become more powerful and central to our lives, they also become bigger targets for hackers. So, whether you're rocking the latest flagship or something a little older, understanding the methods hackers use is crucial to protecting yourself. We're going to break down some of the most common hacking techniques, from phishing attacks to malware, and of course, I'm going to give you some essential tips on how to stay safe. Let's get into it. All right, so before we jump into the specifics of hackers get into your phone, it's important to understand mobile hacking is such a big deal these days. Think about it. Our phones are basically mini computers now. We've got our emails, our banking apps, our social media, even our crypto wallets all stored on these devices. That's a gold mine of information for hackers. And the scary part is a lot of people don't treat their phone security with the same seriousness as they would their laptop or desktop. We're talking weak passwords, ignoring software updates, downloading apps from shady sources. All of these things make it way too easy for hackers to get in. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, but knowledge is power. The more you understand about the methods hackers use, the better equipped you'll be to protect yourself. So let's break down some of the most common mobile hacking techniques, starting with one you've probably heard of, phishing attacks. Phishing attacks are like the classic bait and switch of the hacking world. They're all about tricking you into giving up your personal information, like your passwords or credit card details, by disguising themselves as something trustworthy. You might get a text message that looks like it's from your bank, asking you to verify your account details. Or maybe you receive an email that appears to be from a legitimate company, prompting you to click on a link. But here's the catch. These messages are fake. They're designed to look authentic, often using stolen logos and branding to lure you into a false sense of security. And once you click on that link or enter your information, boom, it's game over. The hackers now have what they need to access your accounts, steal your identity, or worse. The key to avoiding phishing attacks is to be vigilant. Double check the sender's address, look for any typos or grammatical errors, and never click on links from sources you don't recognize. Chapter 3. Next up, we've got malware. This is one of the most common and dangerous threats to your phone's security. Now, malware is essentially malicious software that's designed to infiltrate your phone and wreak havoc. It can come in many forms, such as viruses, worms, trojans, ransomware, and spyware. Think of it like a virus for your phone. Just like a biological virus, it can spread and cause all sorts of problems. It can do all sorts of nasty things like stealing your data, tracking your location, or even turning your phone into a botnet zombie. This means your phone could be used to carry out attacks on other devices without you even knowing. So how does malware actually get onto your phone? Understanding the methods of infection is crucial to protecting yourself. Well, there are a few common ways. These methods are often sneaky and can catch even the most vigilant users off guard. One is through malicious apps. These apps might look legitimate and useful, but they hide a dark secret. You might download a game or utility that seems harmless, but hidden within its code is a nasty surprise. Once installed, the malware can start its dirty work. Another way is through compromised websites. These sites might look normal, but they have been infected with malware. If you visit a website that's been infected with malware, it can automatically download and install itself onto your phone without you even realizing it. This is often referred to as a drive-by download. And then there's the good old-fashioned USB drive. This might seem like an outdated method, but it's still very effective. Yes, even in the age of wireless everything, you can still get malware from plugging an infected USB drive into your phone. Always be cautious about the sources of your USB drives. The best way to avoid malware is to be careful about what you download and where you browse. Vigilance is your first line of defense. Stick to official app stores, be wary of suspicious links, and for goodness sake, scan those USB drives before you plug them in. By taking these precautions, you can significantly reduce the risk of malware infecting your phone. Chapter 4. Now, let's talk about man-in-the-middle attacks, or MITM attacks for short. These types of cyber attacks are particularly insidious because they can be very difficult to detect. Unlike other forms of hacking that might leave obvious signs, a MITM attack can be completely invisible to the user. These are a bit more complex, but essentially, they involve a hacker intercepting the communication between your phone and another device, like a public Wi-Fi network. 
The hacker positions themselves between you and the network, capturing and possibly altering the data that flows between the two. Imagine you're at a coffee shop connected to their Wi-Fi and you're browsing the web, maybe doing some online banking. Everything seems fine, right? You feel secure because you trust the coffee shop's network, but this is where the danger lies. But what you don't know is that a hacker has set up shop on the same network. They could be sitting just a few tables away or even outside in a car using specialized equipment to intercept your data. They're acting as a man in the middle, intercepting all the data that's being transmitted between your phone and the Wi-Fi router. This means they can capture your login credentials, personal messages, and even manipulate the data being sent. This means they can see everything you're doing including your passwords, credit card details, and any other sensitive information you might be sending. They can even redirect you to fake websites that look identical to the real ones, tricking you into entering your information. It's like someone eavesdropping on your conversation, except, in this case, they're not just listening. They're potentially stealing your identity. The consequences can be severe, leading to financial loss, unauthorized access to your accounts, and a compromised digital identity. The best way to protect yourself from MITM attacks is to avoid using public Wi-Fi whenever possible. Public networks are inherently less secure because they are open to anyone, making it easier for hackers to infiltrate. If you must use public Wi-Fi, make sure you're connected to a reputable network and consider using a VPN, which encrypts your traffic and makes it much harder for hackers to intercept. Additionally, always ensure that the websites you visit use HTTPS, which provides an extra layer of security. By taking these precautions, you can significantly reduce the risk of falling victim to a man-in-the-middle attack. Chapter 5 Alright, so we've covered some of the most common mobile hacking techniques. But now, let's talk about what you can do to protect yourself. In today's digital age, our smartphones are like mini-computers that hold a treasure trove of personal information. From banking details to private conversations, our phones are a goldmine for hackers. So, it's crucial to take steps to safeguard your device and your data. First and foremost, use a strong, unique password for your phone and all your important accounts. A strong password typically includes a mix of letters, numbers, and special characters. Avoid using easily guessable information like birthdays or simple sequences. I know it's tempting to use the same password for everything, but trust me, it's not worth the risk. If one account gets compromised, all your other accounts with the same password are vulnerable too. Consider using a password manager to keep track of your different passwords. Second, enable two-factor authentication whenever possible. This adds an extra layer of security by requiring you to enter a code from your phone or email in addition to your password when logging in. It might seem like an extra step, but it significantly reduces the chances of unauthorized access. This adds an extra layer of security by requiring you to enter a code from your phone or email in addition to your password when logging in. Even if someone gets hold of your password, they would still need the second factor to access your account. Third, be cautious about what you download and install on your phone. Malicious apps can disguise themselves as legitimate ones, so always stick to official app stores like Google Play or the Apple App Store. Stick to official app stores and be wary of apps that ask for unnecessary permissions. If an app requests access to data or features that seem unrelated to its function, think twice before granting those permissions. Fourth, keep your phone's software up to date. Software updates often include security patches that can fix vulnerabilities that hackers could exploit. Ignoring these updates can leave your phone exposed to threats. Software updates often include security patches that can fix vulnerabilities that hackers could exploit. Regularly updating your phone ensures that you have the latest protections against new threats. And finally, be aware of your surroundings. Public places can be hotspots for theft and unauthorized access. Always be mindful of where you use your phone and who might be watching. Don't leave your phone unattended in public places and be careful about who you let use your phone. A moment of inattention can lead to your device being stolen or tampered with. By following these tips, you can significantly reduce the risk of your phone being hacked and keep your personal information safe. So, there you have it. A crash course in mobile hacking and how to protect yourself. It's a complex topic, but hopefully, this video has given you a better understanding of the threats out there and the steps you can take to stay safe. Remember, knowledge is power. The more you know about mobile security, the better equipped you'll be to protect yourself and your data. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tech insights. Stay safe out there.